Well, the minister sends his regards uh, ahead of his hopefully arrival later. He's uh, been in Africa, West Africa, and is just returning as we speak. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's been an honor. Uh, it's an honor to be with you here today uh, and to uh, be able to participate, albeit briefly, in this important dialogue. Uh, the conference topic, uh, Women for Peace, reflects Iceland's domestic and foreign policy priorities. Gender equality has become uh, a cornerstone in Iceland's foreign policy, including the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, and the empowerment of women as a driver for sustainable development. The role and participation of women, uh, half of the world's uh, population, is shaping the peace agenda and sustaining uh, peace is, of course, imperative. All of uh, you who have taken part in today's uh, conference uh, have made an important contribution to advancing the women, peace and security agenda. Uh, we need to listen carefully to experts like you and to learn from hard-lived experiences of the brave women who have shared their stories. Uh, our objective must be international peace and security efforts for all, women, children, and men. The adoption of Resolution 1325 was a historic moment, highlighting for the first time that conflict impacts women and men differently. The subsequent resolutions on women, peace, and security reinforce different and important aspects of the involvement of women and men in the prevention of conflict, peace building, and sustaining peace. The spirit of the resolution has been integrated into international law, the planning and the execution of military operations, national policies, and global security agenda. It is a fact that uh, gender equal societies are less likely to experience conflict, and women's empowerment and gender equality can contribute to conflict prevention. While significant progress has been made uh, in the two decades since the adoption of uh, Resolution 1325, significant challenges do remain. Sustainable peace can only be achieved if all voices are heard and the active participation of women uh, peace uh, processes is, uh, to peace, uh, in peace processes is indispensable. This is a key priority for Iceland. Women must be at the table during peace negotiations, and it is our hope uh, that the Nordic Women's Mediator Network that Iceland established together with the other Nordic countries uh, can play a role in bringing more women to the table globally. And I think we must also ensure uh, women's human rights and safety in conflict, including that of di displaced women. Uh, sexual and gender-based violence is unacceptable as a weapon of war. There can be no impunity for such atrocities, and the perpetrators must be brought to justice. As many of you know, um, Icelanders are fortunate to have uh, seen important national progress on gender equality. For 10 consecutive years, Iceland has been ranked both the world's most peaceful country and the most gender equal society in the world. The two go hand in hand as gender equality is both a prerequisite and a driving force for peace. Nevertheless, of course, a lot remains to be done. Iceland was among the first states to adopt a national action plan on the implementation of 1325, and this was back in 2008. Iceland's third NAP was published last November. A global study of national action plans led by UN Women back in 2015 uh, called for states to focus inward in the formulation of coming national plans. In response to this call, Iceland's plan focuses for the first time on internal training and increased awareness of vulnerability and security. As mentioned at the outset, uh, gender equality is a priority for the Icelandic government, and this is reflected in the recent transfer of the portfolio to the office of the Prime Minister. 
At the same time, uh, gender equality is mainstreamed into the formulation and implementation of our foreign policy and thereby a part of the daily work carried out by the Foreign Service. Over 80% of um, Icelandic Development Corporation funding goes towards projects supporting gender equality and women's empowerment in developing countries. Iceland works closely with uh, UN Women and is, as a matter of fact, their uh, largest donor per capita. And we also host the United Nations University Gender Equality Studies program, which has already trained 132 fellows from 22 countries. Iceland supports several other programs in Mozambique, Turkey, and Yemen, to name a few, um, that are directly linked to the 1325 agenda. Uh, we support UNFPA in their work uh, to provide life-saving services uh, to survivors, and we also support UN Women's and OCHA's efforts to ensure a gendered humanitarian response. Women's empowerment and protection are of, often neglected uh, elements uh, in, in human, humanitarian responses. And it is of utmost importance to integrate gender perspectives into policy processes and dialogues and to continuously raise gender awareness in humanitarian action. This is in line with the uh, sustainable development goals of leaving no one behind. And the same applies to international trade. Two years ago, Iceland was among the leading states in drafting the Joint Declaration on Trade and Women's Economic Empowerment, launched at the 11th Ministerial Conference of the WTO in Buenos Aires. This initiative provides a framework for members to ensure that both women and men benefit from trade. And today, 127 members and observers have declared support for this declaration. For me, uh, personally, the fact that gender equality now features highly on the agenda in our work on international trade and defense issues is a sign that times are truly changing. And I can say that this would not have been possible when I started out in the Foreign Service more than 32 years ago. Despite significant progress, uh, Iceland is far from perfect. We will continue to learn from others and to partner with other states to advance the agenda. In this day and age, multilateralism uh, needs nurturing so that strong international organizations may continue to provide a platform for dialogue and, more importantly, for progress. So, dear guests, um, let me reiterate my congratulations to our co-hosts for a successful conference and gratitude to all of you who participated in uh, today's conversation. We share the common goal of wanting to advance the women, peace and security agenda, and I believe today's networking and sharing will definitely contribute to that effort. Thank you very much.